age concern, DHB Police Family Funner. Question number 11, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Communications and Information Technology. How will the commencement of ultra-fast broadband deployment in Hamilton help economic growth? Elvis Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, this morning I was privileged to be in Hamilton as the first fibre was laid beginning the rollout to deliver ultra-fast broadband to 163,000 premises across Hamilton, Tauranga, Whanganui, New Plymouth, Hawara and Tokoroa. This is one of the key parts of the government's economic growth plan. Internet speeds of 100 megabits per second and more will revolutionise the way businesses operate. For example, Stainless Design this morning stated they were looking forward to increasing the productivity of their design processes by digitally transferring files to clients immediately for review and approval. Benefits will accrue to schools connecting students to resources around the globe and for medical specialists being available in more places through technologies like high-definition video conferencing. Tim McIndoe, supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. When will these users benefit from the rollout of ultra-fast broadband? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, the rollout will occur in this area over five years with priority users connected by the end of 2015. The rollout in the central North Island is being conducted by Transfield, who have said it will need to hire around 350 to 450 new staff, 150 of which would be technical staff, for its contracts in central North Island and Canterbury. Telecommunications competition will be increased with wholesale prices as low as half the current price for business services, and residential customers will enjoy a vastly improved service for as much as they currently pay or less. The government is once again delivering on its plan for economic growth with this transformative telecommunications infrastructure. Question number 12, the Honourable Rick Parker. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Defence and reads, does he stand by his statement?